Hey guys, I got some genuine made in the USA flux from eBay and it's definitely from the USA because it says it is a division of AMT Abvabst Metals Technology Inc. This video is about this machine which is a, a pretty strange thing to buy. It is a Sunco 788H battery welder. And so what this is, it's a little machine that creates a very high current at a fairly low voltage, but not super low. Puts it through these pins. You push a battery with a tab. So for instance, here you have a cell with a standard nickel battery lead. You put the battery under here. You push it against these welding points. Push it up a little bit. A switch actuates and it welds the battery tab to the battery. This is a very quick and very effective way of building battery packs. So what you get with it is you get a pedal that for some reason plugs into there. It's a standard just switch foot pedal for actuating the, uh, the power. Uh, there is a built-in like it's kind of a lab power supply, it's a very shitty one for charging lithium ion batteries. So it, it goes from like 4.2 volts to 36 volts. So it's kind of like one to nine series, I guess. Uh, it's a bit weird. It is zero to three amps. So this, if this would actually go down to zero volts, it would actually be a decent lab power supply, but uh, from what I hear, this is actually also a very low quality one, so wouldn't use, use that. There is a current set on the machine, which I'm not sure if this does anything because this is also, this also sets current. It's kind of a weird machine. Uh, I think they repurposed the interface from something else. Uh, you also get these little battery spacers with it, and not just this one, but a couple of this ones and a really big one and one that's got the cells on, on the side i guess you get this pack of nickel tabs which is kind of nice but they're the thin types they're the 0 0.15 millimeters i think and you get this lot uh, actually you have to install these these two uh, welding pins weren't installed by default you have to install those yourself you get an extra two, sorry it's not very sharp, uh, and you get two fuses so that uh, bodes well. Another thing that bodes well is that the moment I plug it in and turn it on, uh, my breaker flew out. So <laughs> it is already defective uh, DOA dead on arrival. Um, oh, by the way, this button here, this adjusts the pressure with which this pushes down and I guess also the actuating point. It's a bit weird. Anyway, uh, that's what you get, and because it doesn't work, I just have to make a video of me repairing it, I guess. Alright, so I loosened all the screws, and uh, the outside shell actually comes off very easily. And we'll be able to take a look. Construction is pretty clear here. The power comes in here, on this bottom uh, incoming wire. It's actually reasonably retained. Uh, there is a positive connection to the ground, but the ground lug has been soldered instead of crimped. Uh, let me see if I can show that. Uh, so that's a that's actually a, a likely failure point. <coughs> goes through a fuse and then it goes into the main board. And from what I gather, there is a large triac on here that switches power to the transformer. And the transformer uh, is basically a 230 volt primary and then a very, very high current wiring with even some wire wrap, but no proper heat shrink uh, that goes to the uh, actual welding head. And that's pretty much it. All it does is turn on and off this transformer. There are some really nice manufacturing details here. So this uh, this screw, this is the spring adjustment 
screw. This goes on, well, this is kind of a makeshift cam that's being threaded. And this is like the thinnest possible material that you can still positively thread. There's only like one thread in here uh, that pulls on a spring. And the spring is actually what well, adjusts the tension on the welding head. But yeah, uh, this has to have a, uh, obviously has to have a stop. And instead of putting on like a uh, self-locking nut or something, or, or have a positive retaining uh, situation, they just kind of scratched off the, let me see if I can make it a bit sharper. They scratched off the threads here. They kind of flattened them. And I mean, should I, should I even say that this is shoddy? The reason why this isn't actually a, a, a good way to do things is because there is no quality control. It's obviously done by hand. So you cannot be absolutely sure that somebody who turns a bit too hard on this uh, won't just strip out the threads in here and the spring will actually go down. And once the spring is loose, it can more or less go anywhere. It can touch the wires. Uh, it can cause all kind of havoc in here. So this is uh, not a very safe system. It's not very good engineering, but uh, I guess, I mean, you get what you pay for. This is one of the cheapest types of battery spot welders. Also very interesting to note is that they have what seems like separate taps uh, selectable on this transformer. And it's kind of, I'm not 100% sure what's happening there, but these are marked, like there are two jumper links and they're marked 110 volts and only one of them has been connected. And I'm very much debating whether this is the problem because I think they're not supposed to be connected at all uh, from what I can tell. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll have to check with the uh, LC meter. Also kind of interesting to note that although it tripped my housebreakers, the fuse that was in the fuse holder, it's still intact. There's, there's nothing wrong here. <laughs> and as per usual with these types of boards, uh, you see that this, there's a transistor under here, uh, which is obviously salvaged. Uh, most of the board is really good quality. Actually, you can see the, uh, the solder quality, like on these, uh, these pins here, everything seems to be machine made, uh, except for that. And this is obviously a salvage transistor from somewhere. Uh, you can he even see some corrosion on the legs. Uh, and here's a very weird detail. The board is actually retained, not with self tappers, but with machine screws. These don't easily go into plastic. So I, I'm thinking that this, this is either some fiber uh, they put in there to make them fit or these are just threads that have been pulled loose during the assembly process uh, this is very unorthodox they clearly just took some screws as evidenced by the fact that there is actually one self tapper in there <laughs> now credit where credit's due uh, the main power switch which is a standard blade type uh, it, its blades actually go through the PCB into this connector type arrangement. Uh, this is very good. This is much better than what you generally see, which is just wires soldered to the board. And the plastic molding is just typical bottom of the barrel stuff for, um, for Chinese manufacturing. You can see that there are holes which are actually, they seem like they're drilled. Uh, they have very clear drilling markings on them. It's been kind of a dull drill that they poured through. Uh, there is just little pieces of extra gunk in there. It's actually very dirty. Uh, there is stuff in there. Um, yeah, it's, it's just very poor quality. And then we're on to the component side of the board and the routing on this, like I've seen this before, so this is not news to me, but uh, the routing is pretty horrible. Um, this is these couple of pips. That's where actually the power input connector is. 
there is some very, very, very slight filtering with the film cap. And then it goes through the on off switch and through the triac. But the pedal switch is here as well, and it's got almost no clearance to the primary. So this is really a very dangerous uh, part of the circuit, especially because the pedal is uh, user facing. So uh, if there is an accidental short, it almost seems like it's hard connected to it as well. No, it's not. No, that's that's just a support leg. That's the, there is a support leg on the pedal switch. That's connected to the hot, so <laughs> that's that's just horrible. This is you, you're not supposed to do that. Obviously, this uh, exposes the prob possibly exposes the user to uh, dangerously high voltages. Um, but otherwise, it's it's fairly decent. Like this is clearly also a salvage uh, transistor or triac. Um, but the rest, like these, are Chen. Jing brand, which I guess they're trying to knock off the knockoff Cheng Ho brand, which are nowadays like more of a C brand than a Z brand. Now, also, I can't really see any faults with it, at least no obvious faults. So, I think I'm gonna take a look at the transformer. Maybe they wired it for 110, i.e., 110 volts instead of 220. Well, I removed that link that said 110 volts um, and we're going to see if this actually does something. Not sure if it will, but who knows. Moment of truth. Hmm. Something seems to work. Hmm. Let me put in the welding electrodes. Hey, let's try if the pedal does something. Oh, display does seem to darken when I do that. Let's see if that works. Let's see if that actually welds something. Nope. So what I think happened here is that the connection that I broke was actually one of the primary connections. So there's, there's just no current flowing at all. In that case, I don't really know what the problem could have been. Just to be sure that that's what I did, I'm gonna measure continuity between the uh, primary on the transformer and yes it is indeed open so there is no current flowing so that's a problem well this is kind of interesting uh, I do have the proper connections now and it's showing 1033 millihenries and if I short that short that I removed then I actually get about 60 millihenries. So I think the 1000 millihenries, I think that's just a runt measurement because that's extremely high even for a 50 hertz transformer. All right, so I think thought I figured it out. I uh, completely mo removed all the solder connections. And what I can see is that there are two connections here and there are two connections here. So what I think they're supposed to be doing is these are two separate windings on the uh, transformer core. And for 110 volts, you just put them in parallel. And for 220, you put them in series. Uh, the only weird thing here is that if I measure the resistance between this and this, or the inductance, 
I get five millihenries inductance over here, five millihenries inductance over here. But then between these two points, which shouldn't be connected at all, there's also 700 ohms and like 15 millihenries. So I think there's there's either a short somewhere here or there's some cross connection. I'm, I'm not 100% sure here what's going on. So I'm gonna remove this uh, PCB. Maybe there are some other connections on the other side and see maybe there's a short on the PCB or, or maybe it's a different winding arrangement. So the, the PCB does actually check out. So if you look at this, this is the 110 volt side. What they're essentially saying here is you have to put 110 volts over these two and these two contacts. And then the actual transformer windings are these white blocks that are between that point and that point, that point and that point. So you have two transformer windings that you effectively put in parallel because you have both poles on both sides. On the 220 volt side, you can clearly see 220 only goes here. This is just bridged. And then there is a transformer winding here and here. And those two are in series with each other and meet up there. So this is actually a simple parallel serial thing. The thing I'm struggling with though, is that if you, if you actually go and measure what you expect, is on here. Here is one pair, and there is a second pair. If I put these, if I measure these independently, they shouldn't be able to conduct to each other, and they should have some value of x millihenries or x henries. And if I put them in series, I expect that number to double. And what actually happens is that if I put these two windings in series, the inductance goes down dramatically. So that's a bit weird. Uh, I really don't know what to think of this, honestly. I, I haven't come across something like this before. Maybe one of them... All, all I can think of is that there is a short somewhere. Or... Maybe one of them has been wound the wrong way, possibly. Uh, no, I figured it out. I, I was being stupid. Um, these are actually co-wound, so these do share a connection. And one winding goes one way and one goes the other way. Uh, and so essentially, these are two windings that are electrically connected on one point that both go around the same way. So if you connect them in series, you get the 220 volt version and connect them in parallel, you actually get the 110 volt version. All right, so it was connected correctly. So I'm going to reconnect it correctly and hope that the first time my fuse blew out was a fluke. <laughs> if it happens again, I don't have much trust in this machine at all anymore, so. Let's hope for the best. All right, I'm officially out of time for this video. So uh, I'm going to plug it in, rewire the transformer in the same way it was, just without the PCB, just with uh, nice wires and heat shrink. And I'm going to plug it in. And if it doesn't work, then it's probably going to take a week until I can actually make it work again. Okay, that part works, and that tripped the breaker. <sighs> well, see you next time.